In this tutorial, I'm going to kind of go over the concept of an API, and I want to discuss it in the context of uh, an example that you're more than likely all already familiar with, and that's searching stuff on Google. Now, when you go to a place like Google.com and you put in a search query, you get back some results on that query. Now, there's a certain interaction between the you know the data stored in Google and you you put in the search query you get back results that are um, well you see that actually they're formatted for you know for visual presentation now uh, uh, an API is very similar it's an interaction between uh, a data source and and instead of a human it's going to be your basically your program or your software or whatever your web page um, and that kind of brings a couple of differences to it. Now, for one, when you when you use an API to extract data, you're not going to get it nicely formatted like this. Instead, you're going to get something like this. And in my example over here, I'm using uh, Facebook to basically pull uh, data from the zombies page, and that's uh, what I did in my Google search too. But you notice that the difference with my uh, with this API derived data is that it's just plain text. Now what's the purpose of just having plain text? Well there's actually two main purposes. The first is it's lightweight. Google search results are formatted for humans but the idea is um, that there's extra HTML put into this uh, content in order to visually present it on the page which means more code, more stuff to download, more overhead but I mean for Google search results obviously you much rather prefer to see it this way than just getting a bunch of text that way and, and the second reason is kind of the, the concept of the separation of HTML from CSS if you're getting back results from a place like Facebook and you want these results to be pumped into your project well you don't necessarily want it formatted any particular way you want to have total control over the vis visual presentation so that would be why um, you want data like this so here um, just to show you this Facebook example that I'm pulling JSON data from their API is just one result. Um, here's an example of a Twitter search result on the search query zombies that uh, ultimately produces multiple results similar to what you'd see uh, here on Google. I mean it's going to provide you with someone's uh, Twitter name, their little icon picture, um, what the text of their uh, message says and um, even like URLs to their user profile all that kind of stuff so um, some interesting other interesting parallels you'll see is uh, on the search strings and this is really how you're going to interact now with Google um, if we look at the search string here maybe it'd be easier to bring up a text editor you see that we have something like this it says google.com forward slash search E, uh, question mark Q equals and then our search term zombies now you could change this search term into anything you want you could change it to uh, puppies and you know what you're gonna end up getting when you do that is you know search results on cute little puppies now uh, this graph that I have here is uh, rather graph from Facebook sort of the same thing uh, you have graph.facebook.com dot com for slash zombies now zombies is the uh, name of the page I mean basically if you replace graph with www dot facebook dot com uh, it'd be forward slash zombies that would be the uh, the page that you're going to actually let's just verify this to be the case and that would be whatever user ID or username was over there that's how you pull for that data and uh, similarly when we look at the Twitter uh, URL that I have here it you see search.twitter.com forward slash search dot JSON question mark Q equals zombies and you could replace zombies with anything you want going back to our puppies example we just put that in and we'll just get more of that same data over there except through except uh, about puppies now how would you even know how to uh, format a string like this well 
any API that you're using is going to come with some sort of uh, documentation and uh, the quality of that documentation varies. Now, a place like Facebook, uh, it really wants people developing stuff for their website because that's, you know, it's only getting their site more popular. So you'll find that they have a uh, really robust and uh, very detailed description of how to use their API. Uh, similar thing with uh, Twitter. They have some great documentation and really it all starts with getting an example of a formatted query sheet string and then kind of manipulating it as you need. So um, the way this plays in is if you start using something like uh, jQuery to pull JSON data, you always need to start with getting the results. And that's really the first step to this idea of mashing up data in your, uh, in your web page. And of course, uh, these examples I gave you are very simplistic in the sense that we're just looking for for the search query puppies but when you look deeper into the documentation you could see that you have a lot of options to show you know to kind of fine fine grain your results maybe maybe uh, any search term that's a puppies within the last you know 24 hours or uh, in a particular geolocation and the same thing with Facebook and um, and actually even Google now I showed you an example of a search query that I created before but if you actually go to google.com and you put in uh, let's put in Dragos Bogdan you'll see that the search the search string that it puts is a lot longer than the example I gave well there's a lot going on on here, um, part of this is Google keeping track of you know what in language you're using, what browser you're using, potentially where you're coming from, and and all that kind of stuff. 